Now, this morning, we want to look at choosing or joining a networking opportunity. Choosing or joining a networking opportunity. Our poster out there, if you look at it, there's a small inscription there that says that when God loves a man and he wants to transform him and his generations, he will introduce him to a networking opportunity. I was talk, chatting with somebody here last night and he also said that it is those that God loves that he reveals Ebony World to. That when God loves you, he will not only bring you in contact with Ebony World, he will reveal it to you. It is a lack of that revelation that is causing confusion for a lot of people. When God loves a man and he wants to transform him and his generations, he will introduce him to a networking opportunity. One of the things you must do, which is one of also the things we talked about in, what, uh, in how to think and prosper, is critical thinking. That was the first thing we looked at, critical thinking. So when you see an opportunity, a networking opportunity, you must be able to critically review that opportunity. Think it through, think it deep. Don't be carried away by the razzmatazz of what you see and you hear. Because these days on the internet, don't believe everything you see. We have seen deceptive videos, even on the internet. We have seen photoshopping, isn't it? So, before, seeing is believing. But now, <laughs> don't believe everything you see. A lot of them are make up. And so you're going to hear a lot of stories, of success stories. But nobody tells you about the struggle that is behind. Nobody tells you how many on whose shoulders they have had to climb to begin to have their success stories. Nobody tells you the sustainability of such success stories. And what we have also discovered that they are not really as successful as they make you believe. That's what we have discovered. Because anything that shakes that company shakes them to their very foundation. And very soon, they have nothing again to show for all their efforts. So, you need to critically consider each opportunity. And never say no to an opportunity because you feel like saying no. Or because of your previous bad experiences with other opportunities. And like our ambassador said on radio, it is before they will say opportunity comes but once. Now opportunity comes knocking every day. <laughs> every second, every minute, opportunities are knocking. In fact, the same opportunity will come again and again and again. If you are not thinking critically, you are going to find that you have taken a stance and you are saying you are not changing your mind. If you cannot change your mind, what else can you change? Now, you are always required to do your own research. That's what they tell us in cryptocurrency world. When they've introduced you to a cryptocurrency, do not say D-Y-O-R. Do your own research. Why? Because it is you that will live with the consequences of your choices. You are free to choose, but you are not free from the consequences of the choice you make. Not even choosing is already a choice. You have chosen to stay out of the fray. Only those who are there can win. You are not in the race, are you going to, ever going to win it? So, critically think. Number one, make sure that it aligns with your own core values. That opportunity, does it align with your own core values? Well, that will take us to another question. Do you have core values? If you do, 
what are your core values? Do you yourself know your core values? Have you documented your core values? The values for which you live, the value for which you will stake everything that you are, the values for which you will sleep and you will wake, they are personal to you. This opportunity, is it in alignment with your personal core values? The majority do not have any value, not to talk of them even being core. And therefore, they can fall for anything. Your core values are those things for which you will stand in the rain. You will stand in the sun. Like our sister who went to radio. She woke up 11 p.m. Sunday night. Preparing herself for an assignment that she gave herself on Monday morning. And she did not sleep anymore until she left for that program around 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning. She finished by 7, 7.30, back home. I troubled her, and the rain was falling heavily. She got up and entered the rain with an umbrella and found our, our way here in spite. Why? Something about her core value is at stake, and she was ready to pay any price to ensure that she stood by it. And that's why she was also so agitated when that misunderstanding happened yesterday morning. Thankfully, it was resolved. So your core values. What are your core values? We've talked about vision and visioning. If you go to our YouTube, we have a video on that. Vision and visioning. Your core values are your mainstay. What holds you firm to ensure that as you pursue your core value, you don't derail. You don't get lost in the fray. The storms of life don't sweep you away from your vision. It's your core value. That's your anchor. That anchors you to the ground family. So, ensure that this opportunity aligns with your core values. I don't drink. I don't give it. I don't take it. I don't fraternize with those who even drink it. I am a teetotaler. And then an opportunity comes. Very lucrative. A networking opportunity. But what are they doing? They are networking spirits. Drinks. Alcohol. But it's very, very financially rewarding. My money won't go there. No matter how attractive. Because it is against my core value. If it's not in alignment with their vision, they don't go there. So, many of us do not have core, we don't have values. Don't even talk of core values. Many of us are so desperate for anything. We're just looking for, is there money to be made there? And so, we fall for anything. So, the first thing is, is it in alignment with your core values? Number two, you've got to ensure that it furthers your own business goals. And I mean any networking opportunity. As you want to sign on, ensure that it aligns with your own business goals. Then the next question is, one, do you have a business? Two, have you even set up goals for your business? Many of the people joining networking opportunity, they don't have any business. Not to talk of goals. All just, they are looking for is somewhere they can just make some money, make some court, you know, and then move on to the next one. Does it further your business goals? When I join this opportunity, does it expand, enlarge my reach? Does it further the cost of my business? Number three, you've got to ask yourself, this networking opportunity is the model sustainable in the long term? Every 
Every network marketing opportunity follows a particular model. Do you even know how to analyze models? You can see that there's a lot that goes into choosing an opportunity. What model are they adopting? Is it sustainable into the long term foreseeable, I mean, uh, future, long term future? If you cannot determine that, you better look for those who can so that you don't, you don't fall into something that is just a flash in the pan. Because many will come and they will go. Many are failing because of their business model. Many are failing because the promoters themselves don't even understand the model. And then everybody participating in it becomes like a liar. So you yourself you got to determine and persuade yourself that truly this model is sustainable into the long term. Because network marketing opportunity is not a get rich quick scheme. Number four. Review to see if the managers or owners pass the integrity test. Review to see if the managers or owners of the business pass the integrity test. So you yourself must have a standard of integrity, therefore. <laughs> you must. There are things you look out for to just show you whether or not this is a people with integrity. You yourself, have you passed the integrity test anyway? Are you a person of integrity? What is integrity? Wholeness, completeness. Are you complete in every material particular? Do you have a standard of integrity that you expect in all your interactions? When you have done that for the owners, you also ask yourself, the team you are joining, because inside each opportunity, apart from the owner-manager, there are also teams. The team you are joining, have they also passed your integrity test. So you must also establish your own way of testing for integrity. As you can see, we have not even talked about compensation, we have not talked about products. Are we together? Then number five, critically to review to see if there is legal compliance. That is, they have complied with all legal regulatory requirements in whatever industry they choose to play to ensure that you are not doing anything illegal. Are they doing legal things legally? You can be doing something legal, but you are doing it illegally. There is no way you can do something illegal legally. Because you cannot build, you cannot bring out legality out of illegality. If it is illegal, it is illegal. But we can be involved in something legal in an illegal fashion. So we don't run foul of the law. When that happens, it affects everybody. Then number six. Critically review the opportunity to see if there is conflict of interest conflict of interest here we are talking of, about owner opportunism where the owner super poses his interest on the opportunity itself where the owner is really concerned more about his personal interest than the survival of the opportunity and the welfare of participants we have seen that again and again I think um, he, Barry White, told us about the story of one of those networks he joined that collapsed because of disagreement between two brothers. We remember that? 
I can't remember which one. Okay, don't want to mention the names. Okay, right. But they, they, they wanted to take it over. They now, instead of them, to not discourage anybody, they just increased the price to 10,000. Something that was 6,000. They just turned it to 10,000. You know? They to when we are still pushing 6,000, we can't push it. Conflict of interest. And it was because they were both of them. The, brother, the other brother now went to go and start to do. And carry people there. Started what? He started his own. His own, his own different, his you own see? Version his own of version of, your, of the same opportunity. Uh -huh. So, where there's conflict of interest, where you are superposing your interest on the opportunity. Then, number seven. Number seven. Critically review the opportunity to see if there is infinity returns on your capital. Infinity returns on your capital. Your ROI must be infinity. That is the beauty of networking. ROI is always infinity. ROI, return on investment. If it is not infinity, get out. What is that, what is that saying? It means that you must immediately doing a few things be able to recoup your capital investment in that opportunity. If you have to work endlessly to work it out, then that is not networking. Because you are not afforded leverage. If you have to worry about your capital commitment with no established get-out route in the ordinary course of business, don't commit. Because there's no leverage. You have put in money to an opportunity, you have to go to church to go and start praying. <laughs> you have to go and start praying. And you don't know how they are going to You are looking for people upon whom you will dump your products. Don't commit. If there's no clear cut path right from the very beginning of how you are going to recover your own investment in a short space of time, don't commit. Because network marketing is not investment. It's not the capital you put in. There are things that you must do for the point to work. And it is called duplication. Success in networking is not how much you have put in or how much you are making out. It is how many times you have duplicated yourself in other people. If you have to worry about people you introduce losing money, you are still operating only in the one market. If you have to worry, as you are looking at an opportunity, if you have to worry about people you introduce losing money, you are still operating only in the one market. You are not networking. You are collecting rent. You are cashing out your goodwill in that one market. Why, what does that mean? It means that most people do not worry about themselves because they know that they can cash out their capital. But they now say, when I bring in a lot of people, how are we sure that, you understand? Because if they don't recover their money, the, the problem challenges on me. That is because you are still operating only in your one market. You are still bringing in only those you know and those who know you directly. You are not networking. It is your goodwill that you are turning to cash. That's why you are worrying. Now, imagine that you are here and you recruit somebody from Bolivia whom you have never met. Are you going to worry that he lost his money? He presented the opportunity, he said he liked it. He said he logged in. If he loses money, he loses money. That's, he has to do his own due diligence. He has to work it out. You worry about people losing money because these are people that know you and you know them. If you have brought in people who are far Somehow you were able to reach them and they said they, they log on. Everybody is looking out for themselves. So if you still have to worry, don't know that you are not networking here too. A networker never has to worry. Why? Because you are presenting this opportunity to people who have also seen it. They have done their own due diligence and say that it's also okay for them. You are not tricking people to enter. You are not forcing them. You are not, you are not cajoling them to enter. They willingly went through this whole process and said that this is an opportunity that I want. So, risk they take. 
the returns they also take. A good network should improve your goodwill, not potentially erode it. Yes. A good network, when you join it, will build your goodwill, not that you cash down on your goodwill. Because the more lives it affects for, for good, the greater your own influence. And then the greater the goodwill that you are building. And the greater your, your social capital. And then finally, infinity returns must be possible to foreseeable generations of your network genealogy. Infinity returns must be possible to foreseeable generations of your network genealogy. What I was also saying is not only you should be capable of infinity returns, you should be able to establish infinity returns for your first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, ten generations. By the which time is beyond your own yeah, reach. And let others also take care of that. So if you cannot see infinity returns for this level of generations, then maybe it's not something that you should even begin to go into. So at this point, I think we have looked at what I consider to be critical in assessing a networking opportunity. It is not the product. No, 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 no. Networking is not about the product. It's not the compensation plan. No, 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 no. Networking is not, about, it's not about the money. You can distribute any product through a well-structured network. And if you deliver well, if you deliver value consistently over time, the profit will roll in. The money will roll in. And when we've done it successfully, it becomes a self-perpetuating machine. And then we now begin to enjoy residual income. Thank you very much. Yes, do we have any reactions, any questions? I want to talk about the warm market. The warm market, yes, go ahead. Should we now, as because mostly we are usually encouraged to even start with our warm market. But you have just explained to us now that our warm market is selling our good. You are cashing out on your good deal. So ultimately, as a networker, I'm supposed to, should I ignore the warm market? Or should I start with this, but believing that I need to move out so that the cold market, or I just go home? You are not a networker until you can market the cold market. Networking is a global opportunity. Ask yourself, how many people are in your warm market anyway that you know? You it, tell us you should check our phone number and all these things. That's old style. We are talking about the new style now. Let's, let's assume that the average person knows about 2,500 or 3,000. What's 3,000 compared to 200 million? The real market is 200 million. And you are just talking about 2,000, 3,000. Now, what is your success rate in any market? If you are able to achieve 3%, you have tried. 3% in any market, you have tried. So even if you are looking at your one market, and then, let's say you, have, you even have 3,000 times 3%, that's 90. 90 people. Will 90 people establish your network? 90. It cannot. It cannot. Therefore, if I take out these 3,000 out of the cold market, how many do I still have? I still have close to 200 million. <laughs> I must find a way to go and fish in the cold market. My success will pull my warm market. <laughs> so that means the best thing for you to do is you really find a way to enter that cold market. All this one that uh, go and bring your warm market, bring your this yeah. other one. You are just cashing out your goodwill. That's the truth. Because if those guys mess you up, you have lost credibility at home. Why do you want to lose? Why do you want to do that? If I cannot market this opportunity in the cold market, I have no business with the opportunity. Because if I have done it well, my warm that is my warm market. They are always there for me. 
when I have succeeded, I don't need I don't need to tell them to they rally around me. Yes. And then the chances are that my one market is also the, my contact one market. That's also the problem. The people I know is also the people I probably know. Because we are all friends, we're all in the same circle. Are we together? Yes. You know somebody in the family. In our family, all of us know ourselves. We know ourselves. But then I recruited this guy in the family. When I'm not bringing you, who are you going to recruit? Yeah. Because the other guy you don't put at me. The other guy don't put at me. You have put everybody in. Who am I going to? So we must learn from the one how to enter that cold market, which is one of the things that you are doing well. When you go to the radio, you're not talking to your relation. No. You are talking to the cold market. And the cold market is responding. It is the cold market that will take your business. You know, Far. Because they are taking it without prejudice. Look at what happened yesterday now. That that guy became your defender in chief. While your warm market is trying to destroy it. Because the cold market has done a cold assessment. And they say, like, oh, this one is good for me. It's not because of you. They are doing it because of them. Unlike your warm market that will come in because of you to humor you. To make you happy. They are not going anywhere with you. Is that cold market that will take it and take full ownership for it and they begin to run with or without you? Is it cold market? One market will oblige you, but they're not going anywhere. <laughs> and you have seen it. You have seen it already. They won't, they won't do anything. But when you have succeeded, and they, they are the one that will see your success, they are the one that will taste from your success, that's when they begin to join. That lady that was, that lady that you, okay, you know this, that came to teach us about, then she was, this uh, Jamba life was okay. Nobody believed that in her, in our group, in, in, her, her, family, in her family, in her family. Yeah, no, don't believe you. When she told us the story, that she even thought to fall one night in her church. No, ma'am. Because she was doing all the things, doing all these things that nothing is, but every time, I ought to be there, you know that kind of thing. That's why she now hit it in this, uh, this That opportunity. Uh, the next thing she got. Yes, go on. A car. Yes. Ah, okay. When they don't got the car, you don't need that. No, they don't need that machine. Now the cold market will not see that car. Because the cold market they are far ah. away. It is the one market that will feel the part of that car will not pull them in. That car so let your you? let your sources be the one that pulls your cold warm market. And that time you don't need to defend it. At that time you don't need to defend whatever they see. Because they've not chosen to enter on their own. Rather than now because of you are just a register. They are not even paying me self. And that's the way your whole market expects you to do the work for them. Exactly. Your whole market yeah. will come in and they expect you to do that work for them. They'll yeah. be looking at you. Yeah. And they will be waiting for what you have. So all this that um, bring a list of 50, 20 people that you know is old style old networking. Style. From the one, know that I'm coming into this business and the whole world is my playing field. So the question is, how do I reach them? How do I reach them? I am, I am sold now on radio. I'm sold on it. Because I didn't know that people still listen to radio. No, me, I didn't know. Come here, come here, I don't listen to it. <laughs> she knows all the radio. She knows all the programs. There's no, there's no news. You know, you know where to move from one to one. If 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 you sit down and listen to radio, you better in the room. You know how to listen to one news. I miss you for that news. Yes. This one, with one second. And bring out a story. All the stuff that you. Ah. Because the story is that I'm a one. Radio one channel. Person. Lawyer. So I'm sold on that now. I'm sold on that. That actually we can use that to reach. That's if, it's one of the best ways to reach the cold market. Immediately. It's very it's immediate. You, you see the impact immediately. You don't even wait. There's no time to waste. You see it. And you know you get immediate feedback from the market. That's even the beauty of the radio. The, unlike when you are doing your handbills or you are doing posters. Yes. They believe that the the the, the start there. You cannot bring yes, anything that you yes, deceive them. That deceive them because it's a radio. Wow. Uh, that's that's yes. the yes. Confidence. Yes. That they know that 
Even you as a person, like that was part of what was causing my own anxiety yesterday. You understand that kind of thing? When they know that, if you don't do what you promise, they can easily call me in the program yeah, the next yeah. day to say this is what you yeah, did to them. Yeah. And you yourself, you don't want that kind of thing to happen. Yeah. So you are sure that whatever you promise, you deliver on it. But you know that is true. But you know that is true. They brought across the radio, he came to it, and they took this million. I have several opportunities that I heard on radio, and they didn't want to deliver on their promise. But if you are a person with integrity, that's what I said before. And you are afraid of your name. That is what that's what I said before, that you must ensure that do they pass the integrity test before you begin to go in there. Yes, do they pass the integrity test? There are ways you can actually measure for integrity. Okay, is there any other question before we go on to some other thing? What you don't get with the cold market? Yes. You must start with the warm market. Okay. There's no way you can get the cold market, that start with the warm market. It's the warm market that will give you that... Liver. That, that liver. Because when you, when you are... For you, you have to build your... That, because for, for you to go to that cold market, shall be dealing with the one market, one market, they are bad here, they are buying here, they are buying here, and the government is building, and that point just... So you cannot easily go to the one market, you can't worry, you can't be... Okay, therefore, market. you must take the one market as a rehearsal. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Your networking has not started, that's the point I'm trying to make. Yes, it has not started, hmm. You have not, if you are in your one market, hmm. you have not started networking, no. Hmm. Hmm. You are still practicing. Okay, yes. You are still trying to see whether you are capable of even going out. Yes. You are building confidence. Yes. You are building. You would have to be careful with that one market too. Let's go discourage you. Yes. Uh, no, if. That's the discouragement. Exact discouragement that you need because they need to discourage you. To strengthen you. To strengthen you. To strengthen you. Yes. When they mock you, that you yeah, have you have 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 to have to have you. Have when they say no, no, no. Hey. That is that what you need. That to know whether you are determined. Yeah, determined. Yeah, determined. Yeah, determined. Yeah, determined. So they will, they will bash you with that no. Not that they can know that if you are really going to that market, you can know. Now, the point I'm trying to make here is that. You cannot build your projections on your one market. Yes. Your one market is your practice ground. Yes, yes. You just need to practice and prepare yourself. Yes. That your networking has not started. Yes, yes, yes. It starts when you enter the cold yes, 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 market. Let's go out and see people who have never seen before. Have never seen before. Uh -huh. That's when you are doing networking. <laughs> okay. Everybody world. Transforming life for life. Hi. People talk to people. And people understand. understand.